Self-care doesn't have to be about going to a spa or spending money on expensive wellness products. Self-care can be about taking a step back or getting a good night's sleep, setting boundaries, forgiving yourself, or asking for help. Self-care activities help us to check in with ourselves, to prioritize our health and our happiness, and to do the things that support our growth and well-being. Lately, I haven't been feeling that great, to be honest. I haven't really been feeling much like myself. I felt very tired and just in a funk. So I started prioritizing my self-care more, and specifically there are three self-care habits that are currently really changing things around for me. So today I want to share these with you. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe down below for more videos like this. And this video has a sponsor, which is Native. I've used their deodorants for a long time, and honestly, I've tried a bunch of different brands when it comes to natural deodorants, and theirs is just the best by far. It's like a whole different league. I love the way they apply, it leaves my skin feeling very soft, they're not sticky, it dries quickly, it doesn't get on my clothes, and the best part is that they do such a good job of keeping me smelling fresh, like honestly for days, even after running errands or doing yoga. They are really effective. This time I chose the scents Cucumber Mint, Lilac and White Tea, and Aloe and Green Tea, which I think is my new favorite. It's from their Sensitive range, which is made without baking soda, for those of us with sensitive skin. The ingredients are familiar and simple, like shea butter, coconut oil. They are aluminum-free, paraben-free, and of course, vegan and cruelty-free. I always get the plastic-free ones. They are made with 90% post-consumer recycled paper. They're also recyclable themselves, and native is also part of 1% for the planet, so they give 1% of their plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. I personally never want to go back. My boyfriend too, <laughs> he uses them too now. And normally you can get three deodorants for $39, but if you use my link and discount code SHZ in the description box, you can get them for $26. So that is 33% off. And you can even use my link and discount code to get 20% off on toothpaste and their body wash as well. So really big thanks to Native for their support. Let's begin with the first of my self-care habits. There's a Dutch concept that has always been very normal for me since I'm Dutch, <laughs> but someone recently asked about it on Patreon in one of our tea time chats and it looks like it's becoming a bit of a trend online, which I actually was not aware of myself. And since then, I've kind of looked into it a bit more and fell in love with it again and rediscovered it again. So I've been doing it a lot more recently and it's been very helpful. It's called Nixe and Nix is the Dutch word for nothing and the EN at the end makes it a verb. So Nixe means nothinging or doing nothing. It's different from things like mindfulness or meditation where we also celebrate doing nothing and just being in a moment, but in that case it is still quite active, like there is active awareness. So you're focusing on your breath or you're focusing on your thoughts and as soon as you notice that your mind starts to wander, you bring your attention back. Whereas with Nixa, there's really none of that. You're completely allowed to let your mind wander. There are no rules or anything, as long as it feels nice when you're doing it. And Nixa doesn't actually have to mean doing nothing. It's more like not doing anything productive or anything that's too active. So you might just hang out on the couch, watch a movie or read a book or a magazine or listen to some music. So basically just lounging around the house. It doesn't have to look pretty or be aesthetically pleasing either. Usually I'm just in my pajamas, no makeup, hair all over the place. You're allowed to get super comfortable. Whatever you feel like doing is fine. No expectations of what you're supposed to be doing. And because of that, it is really nice because it's actually restorative and it really helps me to recharge my battery. The best thing about Nixa is that it is not seen as anything bad or negative or lazy here. People generally know that Nixa is a nice thing to do sometimes and we tend to make time for it occasionally. Of course, it depends on someone's schedule, but you might uh, actually spend like a whole weekend just nixing around the house. And when you go back to work on Monday and people ask you what you did on the weekend, it's perfectly acceptable to just say, oh, it's just nice and nixa. <laughs> and people will say, oh, that's nice. It's kind of like the antidote to hustle culture in a way where we always feel like we need to be busy and productive, even in our time off, like we have to make the most 
of our free time. We have to then exercise and clean the house and go out and do all these fun and hip things so that we have something cool to say when someone asks us what we did on the weekend. And with Nix, there's really none of that. It is a completely guilt-free way to just rest and be and lounge around and basically do nothing. Since we talked about this on Patreon, I did notice that I haven't been making enough time for this lately and I really did miss it. I haven't been nixing lately. I've been working very hard. I've been prioritizing on fitness more. I've had a lot of social engagements and I kind of did fall into that trap of feeling like I always needed to be productive even in my free time. So I was kind of placing all of these heavy expectations on myself of what I needed to do and it was really weighing me down. So I decided to change that up. I am now nixing a bit more, just little hours here and there, but I've also cleared out some weekend days in my schedule to just nix all day. I've been watching Studio Ghibli movies. I've been reading a lot of books, uh, doing a bit of light yoga, and it's been so nice. I do notice that it's not enough and I need a lot more rest to feel better because I'm still not feeling my best, but I do notice that it is starting to help. You can decide how you want to add nix to your life. Maybe you could schedule an hour here or there, or if you have the time, maybe a whole day. Just completely guilt-free you time no expectations of yourself whatsoever. There's nothing that you have to do other than what you feel like doing in that time and just enjoying yourself, resting, recharging, and leaving any type of guilt or feeling that you are lazy out the door. It's really very wonderful. I'm really curious, have you heard of this term before? Or if you're also Dutch, were you aware that this is something that people talk about online? <laughs> because I wasn't, so leave that in the comment section. Another self-care habit that I've been looking into recently and that I've been applying for myself more is self-soothing. I'm not an expert on this, but to me, self-soothing means just things that I can do for myself to regulate my emotions, but in a good way. So if I'm feeling tired or stressed or emotional in some way, what are some things that I can do for myself to kind of bring that down a little bit in a very nice, kind, loving, nurturing way? to just reassure myself that things will be all right, even if I don't know or see the solution just yet. I'm a big fan of dealing with emotions through mindfulness, and this is something that I've been doing for a long time, probably like 20 years or so I've been practicing with this, so it's become second nature to me, just noticing my emotions calmly, acknowledging them and accepting them for being there, but also not holding on to them for longer than I need to. So just watching your emotions basically come and pass. But something else that I'm practicing with adding to that recently is that self-soothing. So is there something I can do to also just make it a bit easier or nicer for myself in the moment? For example, I've been dealing with a bit of stress regarding a family member of mine who's not doing too well currently and I find that in those moments, self-soothing can be quite helpful. Hi everyone, editing Vera here. So I just realized that I forgot to include some examples of self-soothing. So <laughs> I blame the heat wave. I had heat wave brain, <laughs> but you know, at least I smelled nice. So one example of something that really helps me is to do really light uh, restorative yoga, lots of forward folds, child pose, things like that. It always feels really nice if you have some pressure right here in between the, the eyes. That's very soothing. Lying down in general is very soothing to me. So I might even just lie down on the floor for a couple of minutes on the rug with a pillow underneath my head or underneath my knees. Let me just wait for this ambulance to pass by. Something else you can do is massaging the vagus nerve, which is right beneath, uh, underneath the ear. You could do that. It's very calming. Breathing exercises, lots of deep belly breaths. These are all things that really help me to kind of cool down and quiet the mind and balance the equilibrium. And just generally, I like to be a bit more accommodating towards myself. So I might lie down in bed if I'm feeling like I have a stomach ache or a back pain and just listen to some soothing music. I might even work from bed sometimes or just make myself a nice cup of tea, have a little break, things like that. What's important is to find something that helps you in the moment, but that is also good for you long term. So for example, I've also noticed that I've been craving a lot more sugar and caffeine since I'm so tired, uh, but then I don't do that because that's not actually going to help me long term. So maybe for you it's shopping or something else, so try to be mindful about that. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. 
I think it's all about recognizing how you're feeling and then making the choice to deal with that in a kind and gentle way to just do something that helps, something that's good for you. And the best thing about this, in my experience, is that this kind of behavior towards myself has helped me to reaffirm this belief that I matter, that I deserve to be nice to myself and that I'm worth it and that it is perfectly okay to not always be productive and strong and independent. And the third self-care habit that I've been practicing with and that's been very helpful for me recently is being more aware of setting up some kind of emotional boundaries. And this is a little hard to explain or find words for, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm a very empathetic person. Maybe if you're watching this, you can relate, but other people's moods or emotions really affect my own to the point where sometimes I don't even really know if what I'm experiencing belongs to me or someone else. Recently, I've been experiencing this in my own personal life, but also with things like the news being very negative and sad, it's affecting my own mood and emotions, or I'll read something online. I don't really consume social media that much, but I might read someone's comment and that affects me or when someone emails me. Basically, any time that anyone else is going through a hard time or if I read something sad in the news, it has the power to really shift my mood. So what I've been practicing with is setting up just some kind of emotional boundary by recognizing that people can have their own emotions and it is not my job to fix the whole world or to take their emotions onto myself as my own burden. That Of course, I can empathize with others, but I don't have to also take on their emotions. It might be a cliche, but it is very true that we cannot pour from an empty cup. So I cannot be there for others if I'm not feeling good myself. So if I notice that something is draining my energy or has a negative effect, on my mood or my emotions, I try to find a solution for it. This can also be done in more practical ways. Like I've been going back to not looking at my phone at all in the first hour after waking up and the hour before going to bed. I've been kind of falling back into old habits with that one. And I do notice that I feel so much better if I can just slowly wake up in the morning focusing on myself, focusing on how I'm feeling, instead of already burdening myself with all of these stresses around work emails and the news and social media first thing in the morning. So really, if you can only take away one thing from this video, I would suggest it be this one. It makes such a big difference. You could also set boundaries around your phone on other times of the day or even days of the week, like letting people know that on Sunday you're not on your phone, you don't have it with you, you keep your notifications off, and if there's anything urgent, they can call. So just keep your phone away <laughs> and focusing on yourself, recentering, grounding, and just experiencing the day. And what I'm trying to do is when I notice that I'm empathizing with someone, I can listen and try to help, but still keep that emotional wall up, kind of like a glass wall, so that I don't take on their emotions as my own. And then also realizing that this does not make me a selfish person because taking on other people's burdens is not doing anyone any good. So I hope these tips can be helpful for you as well. I've been trying to open up a bit more uh, in my videos on YouTube here and share more about my own personal journey and the things that I'm going through now and the things that I'm doing now instead of the things like in hindsight that I have done to live a more simple, happy and calm life. So I would love to know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video, because then I know that people like it, this kind of format, and I can try to do that more. And if you did enjoy this video, then you will definitely also love my videos on Patreon because they're much more like this as well. And if you join now, you get access to over 60 videos that are already up and I add two new ones every month. And it's also just a great way to support the channel. So you can go to patreon.com slash simplehappyzen. It's $5 a month. You can join and cancel anytime and we would love to have you. Don't forget to check out Native if you like smelling nice and fresh. <laughs> Link and discount code in the description box. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again next week. Bye bye.